Hey guys, good evening. Good evening, your Buddha fam. You are welcome to our, our show. Thank you very much for being here tonight. We bless the name of God Almighty. Thank you for being here. Hello, hello, hello. I salute you all. Angela, Karen. Hey, how are you? Nice to see you. Ghana lady, Temini, I welcome you. Uh, thank you for being here. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And it's the 14th day of November 2021. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I hope you are all doing well and you are keeping safe with your families and your loved ones. Thank you. Happy Sunday. I salute each and every one of you. Those who are in the studio now and those who will be joining us later, you are highly welcome to the platform. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we begin the show. I've got a guest here. Her name is Miss P. We'll just call her Miss P. And before I bring her to share her story, I did uh, intimate to you about it uh, before uh, in my last show on Thursday that we have an ex. Oh, we'll call her. We're going to call her an ex mommy Gio. But that's what they generally call pastor's wife. If I know she's going to laugh. But that's what they call pastor's wife in Nigeria. Since the pastors are daddy Gio's, the mom, the wives, their wives are mommy Gio. So we have an S mommy Gio. She's Miss P. She's in the studio and she has a testimony to share. But before I bring her on, I just want to uh, ask if you have not subscribed already, please do so. So you can make a comment. A lot of people are still reaching out to me and saying I can't comment during the live shows. And I keep repeating it every show. You cannot make a comment when we are live, except you are subscribed. It's subscribers only. That's the least that you can do. It's not a paid subscription. It's completely free. YouTube subscription does not charge money. Okay? It's free. They don't ask you for your debit or credit card. It's just create an email address and then subscribe. Free of charge. Please give the like, hit the like button as you're coming into the studio. And when you put your notification sign on, then you get notified whenever we are live. Thank you so much. And I just want to remind you of our rules here. We don't judge. We listen with an open mind and we try to support as much as possible. It's in no judgment zone. So please respect my guest. If you put any negative or abu abusive comment in the comment section, I will block you. That one, there's no negotiation about it. We don't we don't tolerate any kind of negativity at all. I keep my eye on the comment section and anything that you say that is provocative, you will be blocked. And if I block you, you can no longer comment on this channel ever. I have no problem doing it. I've, do I've blocked. <laughs> the number of people I've blocked <clears throat> is too many. And I will keep doing it because what we are trying to achieve is to create a safe place where people can be encouraged, they feel confident to come and share their life story. It is not your story. Don't make it about yourself. It is not your sister's story. No judgment, please. Thank you very much, my I know you guys are usually very, very loving. You are warm, you are accommodating, you are compassionate, and you always empathize and look at solutions only. So thank you very much. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Miss P on. And I salute you, Miss P. You are highly welcome to the platform. Thank you very much. How yeah. are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Hope you can hear me. Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. Can you guys hear Miss P? Can you hear Miss Miss Mommy Gio? <laughs> <laughs> can you hear Mommy Gio? Mommy Gio is here. Can you get all of you that are calling me Mommy Gio? We have a real Mommy Gio in the in the building today. Not me. Me, I'm a fake one. <laughs> Oh, dear. You're welcome, my sister. God bless you. Thank mm. you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, sisters and brothers. It's a great privilege and opportunity to be able to be on this platform and also share my experience. And thank you, uh, Angie, 
B for um, allowing me, you know, to come in and share my experience. The Lord bless you for the great work they are doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm from Nigeria and um, um, I got married 2002. So I was in Nigeria. I was working in Nigeria. I had a very good job with the Ministry of Education there. And my husband, ex-husband, was a pastor. Um, so we, we met briefly. I think we just got it for six months. And then <clears throat> the seventh month or so, um, we got married. So during that period, um, he's somebody that travels a lot. So we, we didn't really have... Um, get to know each other much. Um, we are from the same place anyway, but he didn't grow up um, in my hometown, so to say. So he was traveling most time um, to Lagos, and different parts of the countries, and here abroad. Um, before I met him, so he was already here. He started a ministry here, just like very young, like three months when we met. So. And, um, and because of his travel schedule, we didn't really get to know each other much. And um, I know far back at home, once you're a pastor, there's this um, belief that, oh, you're a pastor, you must have all the characters and qualities and what it takes, you know, to be a, a pastor, a man of God, as we used to say it. And um, so when we met, we met through my aunt. I think my aunt, she came here. So when he was going back home, he met my aunt, and then my aunt bought uh, some things to told him to um, drop it for, for me. So, and that was how we met. So during, during that time we were quoting, um, I think one of the things that I, he said that attracted me to him that I, I was also a very prayerful person, and I was my life was just ministry. You know, I go to office, come back, go to church, and that was it. You know, I was so passionate about God, and um, and one of the things he said that attracted me to him again was that I, I asked him about his ministry and uh, about what he was doing, and I said, oh, I said, oh, I would love to also be including you in my prayers, and he said that was the thing that actually drew him to me because most women would not even ask him about the ministry and things like that, and he cut this whole story short. Um, seven months later. Uh, we got engaged and then we got married in Nigeria. So when we got married in Nigeria, he came back to the UK and um, continued with the ministry. So I was in Nigeria and the plan was that I was going to, to join him here in the UK. So after we got married, so he would come and go, come and go, come and go like that for a, a year or so. And But then after a year, and I discovered that uh he wasn't calling as much as he used to and whenever we talk on the phone small thing aggravates him he gets angry quite easily and i was just wondering what was really going on so anyway so we got on the plan i now applied to um because i was going to join him in the uk and i applied you know to um to my workplace to kind of uh resign so and uh, the application was approved. But even then, the plan, plan that was, he was going to send me the papers uh, for me to come over. So, um, and I kept telling him, where are the papers? I mean, when are you going to send them? And things like that. He said a friend was coming, so he was going to send everything to, uh, through him so that I will apply through the embassy. So, but then, uh, something just told me that, look, don't even resign totally, but just um, take a leave of absence. So I took a leave of absence. And then the Lord also laid in my heart that I should apply for a scholarship uh, in the Federal Ministry of Education, which I did. So, and um, after, after about two or three months as planned, he didn't uh, send the papers. And the person that came, did not bring the papers and i was just wondering and then the, my office had already released me that you can now go on on leave of absence so here i was i was stranded uh there was no salary coming in and hearing from him was so difficult 
I said, what do I do? I didn't tell my parents because they'll be so devastated. I mean, this is somebody that just got married less than a year and you're already having problem. I didn't know what to do. So what I did was uh, I just prayed about it. I said, Lord, how do I go about it? And they were said, okay, go and take um, a visa, you know, and at least let me see for myself. So I confided in a pastor in Nigeria in my office. So he prayed with me. He said, you know what, go and take visa. At least our office is well known, it's well respected, it's near the embassy. So you go and apply, we'll talk to somebody in the office to give you a back, uh, a pay, uh, um, uh, like an introductory letter or so. So thank God I was given the visa. So I, he didn't even send me money to even come over. I had to even go and you know, take a loan from my savings and uh, just book the ticket and came to England. Ha. When I came, my goodness, I mean, it was just a disaster because there was this lady um, that I don't know how he even came to know about the lady. The lady was in England, I mean, came over England and was staying with him. And, and I remember that the lady, before she traveled to, uh, to London here, she met me. And say she was going to travel. I not. I didn't even know that it's my husband's ex-husband sent her invitation letter to come. So it was later that I knew. So I mean, it was just a whole lot of scandal. And I said, why would you do? Why would you send somebody an invitation and me that I'm your wife? You will not send me, give me the necessary papers for me to join you. After this was all our agreement, he, he just couldn't give me a, any reasonable explanation. You know, and, and just to also know that even while in Nigeria, when that problem was going on, I miscarried because of shock. I was just like mentally um, distorted. I was depressed. Uh, so you could just, I, I hate these things to myself. I only told a few friends, I mean, one or two friends or so. I didn't tell my parents because I just didn't know how they were going to take it. You know, the shock. So I said, okay. So. In, when I now came, there was a big scandal, and I realized that he was going out with the lady, you know. So there was another so, woman in your husband's house, husband's house when you got yes. there. Yeah, there was an, yeah, she came in from Nigeria, you know. He can said, you, you know, It's like your it's YouTube, like YouTube is on. on. Can you mute can you it mute or it? turn it off? Because I'm hearing myself, it's bouncing back. Okay, mm, put your YouTube on, off. I mean, put it off so that, yeah, I can't hear it anymore. It's fine. Okay, okay. Right, so, thank you. So the, yeah. you met another woman in your husband's house. They were living together and, and you confirmed that they were already dating before you got here. Yes, but she came from Nigeria. He told me that it was a, a friend, his a girlfriend to his own friend. But I don't know how they started, you know, whatever. So when I came, the thing really affected the church. It, there was a big scandal, so the church split. Many people left, and then he was still on uh, minister of religion. So he was still on minister of religion. So he knew that he hadn't gotten his full stay yet. So he wouldn't just mess up like that. So, but anyway, to cut the whole story short, he uh, he begged and apologized, and so and some elders in the church came and talked to me because I didn't know what to do, whether to go back to, because I wanted to come and see things for myself. And mm -hmm. to decide, and I already they've given me two years uh, leave of absence. Even if I go back to Nigeria, I don't have any means of income, and my younger ones were still just starting work um, freshly. I had bills to pay and all sorts of things. Anyway, to cut the whole story short, he he begged me and say, oh, you know, um, trying to explain, but the explanation just couldn't match up. I mean, you couldn't just send me papers and you sending somebody else invitation just after one year of marriage. You know, so after much pleading and uh, from elders and few one or two people that I, I knew here, I said, okay, um, let's see how it goes. So, but, but the damage had already been done in the midst. So, so we just had to like start all over again. In fact, we started from the kitchen, somebody's kitchen, you know. So I, it, it really hurt me though, but I, I just let go and said, okay. Um, at least as a Christian, you need to forgive, you need to move on. They, they, maybe, you know, it's a lesson God wants them to teach us, you know. So, but anyway, we moved on. And then, um, remember, I had a visiting visa. So, and for, uh, then I now got pregnant. 
So I was supposed to go back to Nigeria to now go and get the same kind of visa that yeah, he had. But uh, my GP said, no, I shouldn't go because uh, if I come down with malaria, she wouldn't know how to deal with me. So she wrote a letter to the home office. And so we're able to apply from here instead of me going back to 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 Nigeria. So to fast forward, I now notice I started because we're now I'm now with him fully. I now began to notice some certain kind of attitude and behavior he has towards women, and he, he like kind of uh, he, he he jokes with women a lot, and he gets so attached to them. There's some certain things that I just found very strange that a pastor should not be doing that, like kind of a pervert or something like that. So these are the things that I, I didn't pick up, you know, when we were dating because we, we, we didn't really spend much time. And that was the mistake on, on my own side. And this kind of belief that as a pastor, you know, uh, he must um, be holier than thou and things like that. But to be honest with you, he is gifted in the prophetic. He's highly gifted. When I say highly gifted, he's highly gifted in the prophetic, you know, but in terms of character wise, it's terrible. You know, so and because of that, he was drawn to a lot of people. You know, people like the prophetic a lot. When you tell them things about their lives and things, oh my God, they get so excited. And he was also uh, good at that. And because of that, he was drawn to a lot of highly placed people in the society, even governors and things like that, and people, people, ministers, people in the top authorities. You know, they'll come and he will pray for them. He will tell them things like that. You know, so we start all started all over again in in the UK. We had to build the ministry again from the scratch. You know, I didn't even work because after I got my visa, because it was like full time job. I go drop my daughter in school, uh, you know, and then go to the church. People be coming from morning to evening, and then uh, after I get back, and my mother came around, then I started my masters. Um, because I was able to get a scholarship, I started a master's in IT, and then I, I finished. So, and then fast forward, um, they now renew our papers another two years, and then we had our indefinite stay. Ah, when we had our indefinite stay, it was as if he had gotten a license. That was when his true color now came out. Ah, so he knew that. And then the ministry had grown, and we, we had a lease, a big uh, building um, in southeast London here. And then we had over 350 members. And then with no time, we now, because he also traveled a lot. He travels to America, he travels to Japan, and things like that. So we even had a branch of the church in Japan. We had a branch of the church in uh, Cyprus. We had a branch in America. We had another branch in Nigeria. So the church actually grew very quickly. Within seven years, it has grown so big. And so he just felt that, oh, he had arrived. That was when he started showing his true color. You know, he started withdrawing from me and then started having girlfriends and things like that. Oh my God. And I said, look, I remember, having to even start, I wanted to start work. He would tell me, oh, I shouldn't worry. You know, I should just focus on the ministry. God will bless us, all these things. So all this while I was just focusing on the ministry and on my daughter again, because she was still very young. I had to go pick her up after three hours and things like that. I couldn't even do any reasonable job. So I was in the church, I'll do prayer. I'll do the videos. I was taking care of the IT department. The ministry, the women's ministry was very vibrant. Anytime we had our women's mini, uh, conference, it was so big. We used to even invite people from America, from um, Nigeria, and things like that. And it was so vibrant, you know. I really loved it because I will saw a lot of life being changed. But, you know, and one other thing again, he started mixing, because of his character, he started mixing with all these Ghanaian prophets that came around. And Nigerians, so, um, and some of them, they live a kind of, you know, he envy their life because they are also uh, into all, kind, all kinds of questionable characters, you know, and that kind of reinforced his own behavior. Because when, when I complained to a few of them in private, I said, this is what I'm going through. They now looked at it like, oh, what is it? It's like, I mean, keep up to it and just cover your mind. All you need to do is to pray and to trust God. I said, but these are the things that are, is affecting the ministry, you know. So it goes so bad to the point 
whereby um he will even travel abroad with his girlfriend and uh i will not even be aware of it you know it is only that day that that day that he's about to travel you know sometimes even call me from the airport oh I'm, I'm going to travel and i will do my own investigation and find out that maybe some of his members will go with him and some few female friends will also go in that group so he was starting to sideline me in everything in the church you know and to the point whereby he packed from our, our bedroom to um, a separate place. But this time around, we had gotten, gotten our British passport and he wasn't even hiding the relationship any longer. And there was this particular girl that he was friending in the church and he wasn't even hiding it. I mean, that was even the most traumatizing thing. This lady, he, in fact, he, he will start telling me things like, oh, um, you know, I only married you because um, I, you were a prayerful person. I wanted you to help me in my ministry. I, I didn't really love you, you know. So I, I'm sorry, I don't want to waste your time, but you're still very young. There are very nice guys around. You can, you know, start dating and then uh, marry. <laughs> and the way he would say this thing, it was so disgusting. It's like he would say it in a very direct, great way, in, in, in a manner that it's like you strip your self-esteem completely so, miss p what do you mean that was he encouraging you to start dating men as well yes so your your pastor husband who was philandering now according to what you've told us so far yeah traveling with other people did he ever travel with you to all this ministration that he's going to no 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 he has never abroad he has he has never he has never. even when i ask him he will not even tell me i only hear that oh he's traveling sometimes he's even on his way to airports sometimes so, even even the church members that will tell me, oh, a uh, pastor has, uh, is just coming from the airport. I say, really? So now he's encouraging you to date men as well. Yes. And the reason why he was doing that, because he wanted to now, it's like a trap, set a trap for me so that he can now use it because he had no, he, he, he has no any tangible reason, you know, to, to do what he was doing. Was he so asking, he was, sorry, was he asking for the marriage to end or he wanted yeah, you yeah. to have an open relationship? I don't understand. No, no, he wanted the marriage to end. So he had told me to go and contact a solicitor and I was unwilling to do that. And because okay. I didn't even have much money so to go and contact a solicitor. So, but in order to know that he's very serious, he packed out of the room. He wasn't sleeping with me for like two and a half years. Were you, was, were you on a salary for all this work you are doing in the ministry? I was not on one cobble. You are not on and the salary? Fact, no, we started from the scratch and we had two pastors and a secretary who were in full time and were paid very well. I said, even if it's half something, just he, he wasn't just willing. It's like, okay, I've, it's like hiring a somebody. Once the job is done, you've just been discarded. That was it. Even so, I remember, yeah. What, what was your role in the church? I would come in the morning because a lot of the church was always open every day. So I come in the morning, people would come there because he was on television. He was on three television. So he was very popular and people would book. I take the bookings. They come in. So I come into the church. We pray, we do ministration and things like that. And then I edit videos. I, I prepare for the next broadcast. And I also had the women's ministry. I was doing follow up. A lot of people homeless. A lot of the church was always very busy. People would come outside London. You wouldn't fly in. From so other you were not paid for all this job that I you I was doing. not paid one one dime. So how are you getting money to sustain yourself? He would give it to me. Uh, he gave me uh, a certain money for the house, but for my own personal self, no. It's the money he gives me for taking maybe, uh, you know, cooking and taking care of my daughter. That, that was anything that remains there. Then and I kind of maybe. So he was giving you pocket money basically for the house to run the house. To run to run the house, you know. Okay. Okay. which was a, a, a normal thing so and i said okay if that's the case um you know i i was also going to start looking for for job but even even before then there were there were some uh trainings that i, I proposed because i went to nigeria to do some training i was i got paid with that but uh the also breakthrough that came for me was when i designed a system a career development system in nigeria and i went to nigeria so they told me to go and write um, memorandum of understanding, and that's those things I built was in the church system. Could you believe that 
the secretary, he, he, he now told the secretary to shut me down from the system and they wiped away everything from the system. Because I was hosting it in the same server with the church. They wiped away everything. All my CDs that I did preach in the church, I didn't get anything. That was the day I came into the church and the, the secretary wanted to fight me. She switched off the computer and said, uh, pastor said, we should not allow you to use the system. We should not allow you to get into the system. In fact, the, the literal, I remember one Sunday when I went to the church, that was the last time I went to the church with my daughter. He told one of the, his um, leaders to walk me out of the church. So the, the leader came and walked me and my daughter out of the church. My daughter was crying. She said, mom, what have we done? What have we done that we're told to get out of the church? She was just seven years old then, but she was so devastated. Mm -hmm. She cried all the way home, you know? So it was just so bad. I was hit back and front. And those girls that he was going out with, they were highly diabolical. They wanted to delete me. And mm -hmm. the Lord showed me. He showed me in the dream. They went to meet a babalao here in London. The Lord said, okay. you better get up and start praying. This is not the time for you to be crying. Hmm. You have these guys as serious. Do you know they confronted me? They said they will bury me in London. No, not in the spirit, though. Physically. physically. They said we will we'll conduct your burial. I said, it's, <laughs> I just gave it to them. And they are church I mean, members, these women that, that are dating yes. your, your pastor's husband. Even my, even my ex-husband himself told me. So that means he's also diabolical, right? I don't know whether I won't. I, I don't. To be honest, I, I, I at that point, said, I'm saying yes. Yeah. yeah, because you said at the beginning that he has this uh, prophetic. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so all I, that. I, I and we all know that. how yeah. this prophecy comes about. Most of them go mm -hmm. and take something to rub on their eyes, so they begin to see people's so, problems. And I said no. I said it, it, you cannot kill me, and you have no right to kill me. You are not the one that gave me the life. Yeah, the you know? So I now had to tell my parents that look, this is what is going on. I'm really very sorry. But I've, I've really been trying to, you know, not tell you in details, but I really have to tell you now so that in case I told some of my relations uh, in, my, in the UK and let them know and few people too, to let them know. But it, mm -hmm. the abuse intensified. Look, this guy would pick his girlfriends. I would enter the bus. He would drive the car and pass me and go to the church. So he was not, you are not living together at this point. No, we were living together, but most times he doesn't even stay in the house. Sometimes for three, four weeks, I don't even know where he stays. Hmm. You know, so and he'll come preach in the church, do everything as if nothing ha happens. You say, why are you even praying? I don't even need your prayer. Whether you pray or not, the church would uh, grow. So we don't need you. You know, just yeah. go and meet the lawyer. You know, so but I had to take a lawyer through the. Um, because I didn't have money to book it for a lawyer. It was too expensive. So I had to go through the legal uh, aid. Legal aid, yeah. Yeah, legal aid. So, you know, so they were filing here and there. And then he, when, I remember when he bought the house, he didn't put my name in the house. It was a big, he said, no, go on. We say women are buying a house in London. You go and look for your own money and buy your own house. And I was telling him, is that how you're going to pay? Me? When we're in Nigeria, you live in my own house because the, the, my ministry gave me a house. You had nothing when we started. You know, even you're going to London and coming was because of generosity of, of people. We started from a kitchen, all the scandal. I reminded him, he said, he was just laughing. He said, it doesn't matter, that's in the past. We're talking of new things now. And he would say very derogating things about me. Things, I mean, it's, it's just terrible. I remember one time when we were doing seven anniversary, after talking about the church, he couldn't even mention my name. And some women had to walk to him to say, Ah, pastor, we, some of us knew how this church started. How, how dare you talk about this church without your wife? He said, that will be the last time I'll be in this church because this thing is no good. As you are doing it to your wife like that, you're going to do it to us. So they walked out of the church, you know. And then he started, because he, he got to the point where he was telling people, ah, yeah, 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 he's going to divorce. And he said, look, hey, if anybody doesn't like what he's doing, the person, they should walk out of the church. He doesn't care. Hmm. So it was so open it, now to the whole church. What it was, was going open. On in the marriage? I tell you, I have seen Muslims who came to the church and walked back to the mosque. Hindus who went back to their normal. They were so devout. It's like, what is the hell is this? We've we've invested money. We've invested our life. We've helped you. We came to the UK. You didn't know people. We we had to go around 
to tell people to trust in you and things like that. And this is how you're going to... He wasn't just having none of it. He was so boastful, so arrogant and intensified. And meanwhile, I was facing a lot of battle. In fact, three times my life was attempted. Three major times. They boggled into my house. Thank God I was not around. They turned the whole house upside down. They took my computer. There was a bag that I normally keep all my certificate. Everything about me in this life is there. So, I, I remember. So yeah. uh, let me just pause you a minute. Thank you yeah. very much, Miss P. You're doing very well. I appreciate yeah. um, your, your very, very coherent. And, you know, your story is just... The way you're narrating it, everybody's just in awe of. <laughs> wow, wow. So I wanted to just bring out something there because uh, you said quite a bit and I've tried as much as possible not to interrupt. But there was something there that I think is a red flag that we should discuss. And that was the fact that for seven years, you built a church from the scratch, Yeah. you know, with this man and the church was very prosperous and you were not paid Okay, that is a learning there is a red flag. Please, I don't care if it's a business because let's be honest, all these churches, all these one man churches, they are businesses these days. Okay, mm -hmm. I stand to be corrected, but they are businesses. So you don't build a business with a man or you build a business with a woman and you are doing charity. No, you have to be paid. Mm -hmm. So that was, you probably thought, oh, it's the work of the Lord. No. He is getting paid. He's getting a lot of money. He's flying up and down, traveling to all over the place, enjoying his life, living his best life. He even bought a house, but you didn't get paid. Yeah. So in that situation, what the learning that I feel like we can take from it is that you need to put your foot down that yeah, you deserve yeah. to be on the salary. They need yeah. to have, you have a salary. You also have an allowance as a pastor's wife. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it for free because he is not doing it for free. No. Most of these pastors, they make a hell lot of money. Apart from the offerings and donation, people donate money to them, especially these ones that have a that have a, a, a prophecy. You know, people like prophecy. When they yeah. tell you your life story, you start shaking. But I say this all the time to justify why you shouldn't follow people because of prophecy. Hmm. If a, eh, oracle that we worship, all the priests that you go to in Nigeria, the spiritualists that you go to, they can also tell you your problem. Okay? Yeah. And this day and age, all the spiritualists are becoming pastors because they know pastors are more appreciated, pastors are more endearing. So they all become mm. wearing coats and calling themselves pastors. So my people, we've got 877 people right now on this on the studio. Don't mm. be deceived because somebody told you your mother is black. Your mother is short. Your mother uh, went to this school. Your siblings, you have five siblings. Lori Ro is Lori Ro. Don't be deceived by prophecy. I'm not saying that there are not good prophets out there or prophetess, but <laughs> the Bible teaches us about the spirit of discernment. Just because somebody tells you your problem does not mean that they have the solution to it. But Africans will like somebody telling us, you see, hey, hey, you yeah. told me all about myself. Oh, he must be a man of God. No, he is not. Okay, because a real man of God, from what you've described, he your your ex husband is definitely not, not a real man of God. Okay? And another thing I also want to add, which I think also from that character, he was from a highly abusive home, and his mother was actually married five times. And what? His, yeah, his mother was married five times, and his dad was had three wives. So he grew up in this kind of environment where he's not accountable. You understand what I mean? It's like mm. you can go for one month and nobody asks you where you've gone. So that character just was his foundation. So when, when he actually said he got born again, he didn't deal with it. So what I, want, what I want to point out that if you are a Christian and born again, you have to deal with your foundation, my dear. You have to, or else those things will come after you. But he didn't. I, I don't know. I don't know how born again that man was, but let's not yeah. get into that. Carry yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Carry on because of so, time, please. Yeah. Mm. So, so uh, okay. So if you are if you are in a minute, because you see this thing I faced a lot of pastors' wives who told me that they were not paid. So just a lesson, because if you are a pastor's wife, truly a pastor's wife, it doesn't mean that you should leave your job totally and come and work in the ministry. If you have to be full time ministry, make sure that you are called and you are also paid. So to cut the whole story short, during this time, we, we now divorced fi finally. So it was now the battle on the house. So I had to go to court to put an uh, injunction 
on the uh, uh, on on the property because he wanted to throw me out and my daughter. I said it will never happen. So you he were living in the house and he had moved out at that time. Yeah, he had to move out. So he they they tried to they tried to throw me out. So I had to go and put an injunction and uh, through the court order on the house. So he couldn't yes. do that. He, he couldn't do that. So. And they try everything with some of those demonic church. And I want to also want to say, some of you ladies, that a, a, somebody is having problem with his wife, and you are putting head. It's like you want to carry the contract. <laughs> Remember that whatever you sow, you are going to reap. Those women gave me hell. They were the ones that will come and block me when I'm entering the church. They'll even push me. They oh, physically. No man Did has. Call the police. I wanted them. To, no, no, I didn't call the police. I, I wanted to call the police, but, you know, it's a different story for another day. But to call the whole story show. So after the divorce, I now sat down. I cried one night. It was a Valentine night. I cried. I said, oh, God, why did you bring me to England? What am I supposed to do with my life? Where do I go from here? You know, just direct me because I don't know what to do again. So that night I cried. I cried. I prayed. I praised God. And I said, I slept. I said, just a few minutes, like, I closed my eyes like that. The whole place changed. I saw Jesus walk into my room. And he was very sad. I I, I looked at him. It's, he wasn't opening his mouth, but spirit was communicating. And he was telling me that all this while, he, he has been with me, but I was not conscious of him. I was too distracted because of my marriage. So he took me into the future. And he was showing me things that I was going to do. Uh, ministering to people, praying for them, laying hands on them. And then he told me that I needed to go back to school. I should go and do a PhD in computer science, that he was going to give me a scholarship. And then he, he told me some platforms that I should build and things that I needed I needed to do and books that I needed to, to write. So he said, told me that what I've gone through will help me um, to minister to women. There are so many women in that situation, and he's going to help me um, to you know, uh, preach to this woman, minister to them, and I should. One thing that he also told me that I that my identity is in you, Christ. That he, my identity is not in my marriage, it's not in my job, it's not in everything because these things can be taken away. But mm. that I should develop a relationship. And one important thing he said was I should be conscious of the Holy Spirit. I shouldn't mm. be conscious of my environment. But anything that I needed to know about myself and the future, I should develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Oh, when I woke up from that dream, Jesus, it was like a one trailer load was, was carried lifted. off. Mm. Yeah. After that, I went through a lot though. Tough times, but he has always been with me. So and eventually the scholarship came. What happened and with he, the house? No, I'm still there, even up to today. You so, are still in the house, so he couldn't yeah, take because, it. He no, couldn't he couldn't eject you. Yeah, my daughter is not 18 years, so he can't he can't eject me. So um and even if your daughter is 18, you know you have a share in that house. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So so I um I now went for my PhD in computer science and I hmm. finished. Wow. And, uh, Congratulations. And he told, yeah, thank you. So and he told me to um some platforms that I should develop. One of which is just my logo. So the platform which I develop is to help the secondary school students in Nigeria. It's an e-learning site. I also developed three other e-learning sites and I've written books also about who is a woman hmm. and then um the role of women in the end times. Wow. And then a devotional for a devotional for an end time devotional for men and for also youth. And he began to show me things the lord just told me that his coming is very near so mm. and uh that women should just rise up and depend on him and he's our first husband not our mm. earthly husband mm. which our identity is in him mm. in our, i walk very proudly because i know the god that i serve and amen. i know that he, he talks to me i've amen. written about five books at the moment they're all wow. on amen wow you know, so the end time Thank you. Congratulations. So did you manage, you, so you did your PhD in yeah. computer science. Did you start, yeah. did you get a job after that or were you still fully doing your ministry? No, no, I, I, was, I, was, I was doing contract. I was even, I was even while I was doing my PhD, I, I sometimes uh, do contract with the school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to students, I do as a tutoring, I tutor students. Mm. And I also, yeah, do also outside contracts with the universities. But most time, I've been developing my platforms. 
Yeah. You know, I just started a, a, a job last week recently with the college, you mm. know, but I'm still working on the platform and still also publishing my book. And one so of my you, favorite books was Who is a Woman? And mm. the Lord began to show me who a woman was. And then he now took me to um, to say I should I should look for the meaning of woman or a who uh, is a Canedo, you know, in um in in Jewish language, in in Jewish language. So a, a help met is called Eze, you mm -hmm. know. And honestly, because of time, I cannot go into detail. But when after I finished that book, mm. my God, it was shocking. Do you know? Is it we women we think we're the no a man needed help, and mm. he we are the helper. You see, help met means warrior in mm. in Hebrew. Ezekiel means warrior to surround and to protect. Do you know? Let me just before I we close, please. Let me just share this. The day I left that ministry, the Lord showed me the covering over the church was removed and his authority mm. was removed. Let me, mm. let me tell you, and the Lord said, you are the covering on that church. You mm. are what surrounds him and I've taken it away from him. And this is why I say a lot of ministries, they can even, I don't care that they have one million. Let me tell you, some of them, the authority, he showed me the authority had already been taken away. And people are just there, they are not under any covering and it's very dangerous. When we divorce, about seven pastors in our church divorce. That's to tell you that it's no good for you to just go to any church just like that. What the man of God does is affects the members. Mm -hmm. I know 13 marriages that have broken in that church and my heart bleeds. And there you are know? still people there after all these divorces. They've gone. They've gone. Only few people. Most of the branches had closed. The mm. America, most almost it's just now the one in London. That one is not even up to 20 members or so. Hey. So hmm. to just let you know that so please, apparently it's you that has the gift. It's you that yeah. have the gift of the of, of, yeah. of prophecy or dreams. He yeah. was just he was tapping from the grace that he had mm. by marriage, yeah. by marrying you. So the yeah. minute you left, everything started to crumble in this so-called ministry that he has. Yeah. And before hmm. we close, please let me just share the scripture that because I prayed before coming here and the Lord said yeah, I should share please. this scripture to anyone. He yes. said in the book of John 4, 13, he said, Jesus answered, anyone who drinks this water will test again. But whosoever drink the water that uh, I give them will never test. You know, mm. so the key thing is developing the relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And then secondly, I would say my husband was a narcissist. And mm -hmm. in, in, in 2 Timothy 3, 18, so a 3, 1 to 8, it summarizes narcissism. And mm. one of the things that the church doesn't know and they'll be telling you, because most pastors say, well, go and beg him, go and beg him. I said, I will not beg him. I've just had enough. And let me just you that you are begging. He's the one that will step out of the yeah. marriage and say he was not interested anymore. You see, I've been following your channel, and this is this is what happens. Most of the things that women share, he says, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For mm. men will be lovers of self, lovers mm. of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossip, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, recklessness, conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than um, lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness, although, and they have denied the power in. But this is the most important. He said, avoid such men. Don't do have anything to do with them. And But the church will say, well, have everything to do with them because People will say, stay there until something happens. No, I have just had enough. And the Lord, see, when one had an encounter with Jesus, he didn't even show me anything about my marriage. He just said, you've been distracted. Just focus well, on me. He was showing you about your own life. My life your and my future. Life. Yes. <laughs> my own life. See, I'm, I'm, I'm past all People that. are saying I'm, in the comment uh, section that that book, Who is a Woman? Is that the title? Yeah, Who is a Woman? Yeah. Yeah, we probably need to bring you back to talk about that book. Yeah. Mm, if you don't mind. We no, need to I wouldn't talk mind because that. you know why? Mm. You know why? If only I knew this something like this. It was the only spirit that revealed this thing to me. Honestly, I would have looked a long ago. Do you know that uh, the Lord showed me some certain things about women? Eh? He said, do you know you share the same name with the Holy Spirit? You are a helper. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He said, look mm. at the attributes of the Holy Spirit. You share the same thing. He said, somebody needs help, and I am bringing somebody to help you. He said, the helper, somebody who is, who, who is the helper cannot be less than somebody who, who needs help. He said, you are a covering, you are a surround, you, you are, you are, you are a, a warrior. That's what the boy was saying. The Lord said, told me, he said, you are a warrior. 
That is who you are, Ezekiel. That's why I had to go to deep into the Hebrew. It took me to six months to go. Yes, mm -hmm. I did extensive research. I read more than about thirty books. Doing is it still on television now? You said it was on three Amazon. television channel. No, I mean your ex, your ex, uh, pastor husband. Is it still on television now? Preaching? No, no. He said, "Where will he get the money?" She's not on television. Okay. He sold his car. He was living a very expensive life. You know, he sold his car, everything, nothing. He's just there, you know. So, and he went to America and remarried. Didn't last for six months. And nobody can stay with him because narcissists, that is how they are. And one thing I also want to say, please, women, you see, you don't uh, go out of abusive relations. Just get out. Mm. It will affect your children. When you later in life, you will suffer because your in-laws, your daughter-in-law, son-in-laws will be coming with all kinds of things. They see these men or women do these things. They copy the same thing. So they, they, you, don't, you don't need to stay in an abusive relation. It's very dangerous. That, see, I, I had three times I faced danger, three major times. And they told me they were going to delete me, but I really thank God. The, even my daughter was saying, Mom, what have we done? Why am I getting an attack? Twice a vehicle almost knocked us down. It was major. Let me tell you. Oh, you people... didn't marry any of those women that were fighting you in the church in London. You had to go all the way to America to go and marry, to remarry after your divorce. Yeah, but it didn't work out. So you he's already have... divorced again to another person. Yeah, he's already divorced again. How long so... ago was your divorce? Um, it was uh, seven years now. And within seven years, he's married and divorced again. Yeah. Mm. They will not stay. They are narcissists. They will not stay. Their character will not allow them to stay. And so I want to uh, there's finally, please, you see, eh, please, wherever, which church, you, whatever church you are worshipping, just ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you uh, the spirit, that the, whether his presence is there or else you will just be struggling. You have no covering there. If I, maybe some other times I'll talk about pastor's wife. Let me tell you, when I started uh, mixing with pastors why? because I have an um, uh, organization called Spring of Life. That is where we have a lot of them are pastors' wives, a lot of them are sisters who have divorced. I've, I've been to mental homes to go and see women who have their head on colo. I have traveled around this London, seeing women, homelessness. Some have even stayed with me. I have seen pastors' wives that are going to do bigamy, going to Nigeria and remarry. <laughs> I've seen a lot. And I've been supporting them. We've been supporting ourselves. If you hear some stories there, your head, your brain will go into reverse gear. Mm, I'm not. telling you. We're so not. don't be deceived by people's uh, title. I don't mm. get deceived. And be very, very careful. You know, so they, some of them have even wanted to commit suicide. We had to intervene. Okay, so we don't yeah. use that word on this platform, please. Oh, oh sorry, 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 mm. sorry. Yeah. YouTube yeah. is so, going to be very yeah, angry with that. To, mm. delete, yeah, so... Please, I, before before I just round up, the most important thing which I want you to learn here, for those of you who are not married, don't be deceived. Please, shine your eyes very well. Mm -hmm. Be careful of the red flags. Don't no, let, let him call Jesus one million times. That is none of your business. Just ask, open your eyes, be wise, and then be careful the church you, you, you go into. And then thirdly, don't stay in an abusive marriage. Please, if I, I kept too much silence, talk about it, shout about it. It's not by force. Marriage is not going to take you to heaven. You don't need marriage certificates to get to heaven. Mm. Your, your identity is in Christ, not in marriage. If it doesn't work, you can stay apart and pray. But if the person has remarried and move on, please, my sister, you need to think of what to do with your life. And then, you see, uh, the last when the Lord told me to go back to school, it shows you that that a gift that has been in me that even myself I didn't realize it was God that told me that look, you have so much in you, you don't have to waste it. Go and go to school. So mm. I now gone back. I finished my PhD. Thanks be to God, and uh, He's using me greatly, both in the ministry and even in my my profession now. So. Just know that your identity is in Christ alone and nobody else. Once you are even having an encounter with Jesus, I tell you, your head will be high up because like now he has told me some certain things to do in the future. So I know what to do. You know, I've, I've have direction now. I have a focus now. I have something I can hold on to now. And he has been faithful since then. Thank you very much. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Miss P.
well narrated. We congratulate you. In fact, the comment section is buzzing with people just saying, wow, wow, wow. It's not all the time we see people who come, women who come here to share, and theirs is absolutely a testimony whereby they manage to turn things around yeah. uh, by the grace of God. But you have managed to do that. So we really, really, really congratulate you. Well done. Well done for not allowing this marriage to define you, even though it was a Mongo Park, Mongo Park pastor. Definitely, 100% Mongo Park pastors. Yeah, but I like what one of my uh, the, uh, people commenting here said earlier on that. We, we tend to forget that uh, pastors are human beings as well. Uh, mm -hmm. In Africa, unfortunately, we've, you know, put pastor in this PDS here that, you know, we think they are so holy. They are, they are the ones that the closest to God. No, we all mm -hmm. have access to God. Nobody is closer to God than you. Mm -hmm. And so I think we need to learn that as well from your story. And I am, sh thank you so much for sharing my sister. Really, really appreciate you. If you want to log off and listen on YouTube, that's absolutely fine. But uh, we are going to, by the grace of God, bring you back to come and talk about, you know, what uh, you, on that book, Who is a Woman? Because we talk about identity, we talk about yeah. self-esteem, we talk about the power that women have because a lot of our women, black women, do not know the power yeah. that they have. So, yeah, we'll definitely bring you back. Thank you so much for being here. And I Thank pray you. that your testimony will be permanent. The Lord, the Lord will... Uh, continue to be with you. We strengthen you from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Thank yeah. you so much, my sister. God bless you. you. So we got a fellow pastor's wife. She is the first, or oh, let me say it, pastor's. Okay, how do I describe you? <laughs> <laughs> pastor's oh, ex-wife. <laughs> ex pastor's. Ex pastor's ex-wife. <laughs> My co, yeah. my co, your co, your pastor, co, -y, co pastors X -Y, were ex. Is there anybody <laughs> have a question? X -X. I'm willing to answer any question. Yeah. Any question? Mm. I just want to um, thank my sister for um, her bravery. Um, only those who were in that kind of circle will know the type of suffering humiliation and so on that not all not all pastor's wife i must let's just clarify that but those of us who endure the other side of things mm. what people go through it's inhumane is you know derogatory it's um it's just terrible i mean i can't mm. tell you the amount of times i spent in a shelter for women but the church mem the church the congregants didn't know but no. I'll come to church on a Sunday or whenever we're having a service, smiling, putting up a smiling face. That's the most painful that. part. <laughs> yeah. The <laughs> Hollywood actor, is it? Uh, you have to be an actor, mm. an actress to um, to um, be close to such people, such mm. kind of environment. I just want to thank God for your bravery. Thank God for, you know, bringing you out. I like what you said when you said... Um, you had an encounter with Jesus and Jesus just addressed you. He did not address you as like somebody's wife, but no. you as an individual. Mm. Before anyone is a wife or a husband, you are an individual. Mm. And God will always approach you in that manner. Mm. And um, and I, I think I thank God for that, you know, bravery and the confidence that you had to um, to listen to God and to move on. And look at how your life has turned out, doctor. This is B. Well done. Mm. I just want to say well, well done to you. Yeah. Well done to you. You we are should have addressed her woman. as Dr. P, not Miss P. Actually, you earned it. You've got the PhD, yeah. so you are actually Dr. P. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She yeah. is a doctor, Dr. B. Well, you know, thank you. I thank God for you. And I thank God for your life. I thank God for the life of your of your daughter. And mm. you will continue to, you know, to to grow and grow and climb, you know, so many um, things that God is going to do through you in the lives of women. And, you know, of course, Auntie B would uh, arrange for you to come back so we can have a look at your book. Is it, is it, is it, are we able to access it on Amazon or? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Uh, Who is a woman? So, okay. Somebody said they cannot find it. Somebody uh, just checked. Uh, I think it's Common Sense Sisters that said no, they just checked okay, maybe on Amazon. In the private chat, can I just put the link? Yeah, you can. You, you yeah. can put it. 
Uh, send it to me. Send it to me on WhatsApp, and I'll oh, put WhatsApp? it in the comment okay, section. Okay. Yeah, because if you put it on a private chat, people will not see it. Okay, I'll mm -hmm. do it. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm. I'll find so please to to all to all the women that who are crying out there. You know that. Let me just say something, Sister B. Mm -hmm. You know the Lord told me something. He said just like, you know, um, what? Let's say you marry your husband and you're not sleeping with him. You've never slept with him. You see how painful it is for the man, or even for the woman. So the Lord said, so many my, of my daughters have not had an encounter with me. So it's, it's like I've never had a relationship with them. Mm. And, they, and they're busy crying. They're busy crying. But I have the solution. I have everything. I have the, 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 um, the all in all about their life. And if only they can focus on me and not their husband first, I will change their life. And that has been my focus do you know that the, what the lord has put inside of me even me i did not know no pastor has ever told me even he himself nobody has ever told me so it was one to one so even when some pastor are giving me false prophecy i was just laughing i said no 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 this is not from god this is not what god told me you see so so the lord now told me look at moses look at uh, abraham all these people had personal encounter and this is the same thing that when Jesus was telling Mary that you have one thing, nobody can take it away from you. And that yeah. is what the devil can never steal. Your relationship, mm -hmm. your husband can do anything. Every You can lose your job, but don't lose that relationship with Christ. That is that is my lifeline. That is my blood. Look at the Samaritan woman that had an encounter with Jesus. Her life changed. Every woman that had an encounter with Jesus, their lives changed. So let's stop depending on men. And then we should also take time and pray for our pastors and, mm -hmm. and also the body of Christ because this thing is a cancer. If I tell you the number of pastors' wives that will tell mm -hmm. me that some of them, their husbands are even sleeping with men. Some of them, mm -hmm. they, <laughs> I won't even go there. I won't even go there. Don't go there. All right. Don't okay. Go there. So, so we're going to allow other people to talk. Thank you so much, Dr. B. Uh, right. Please send me the uh, thing. I've, send me send the thing. I've sent it already. Have you sent it to me? Okay, I'll put it in the yeah. comment section now. Thank you very much. Let's allow more people. Uh, Gigi, uh, yes. yeah, you, you were saying something. Uh, you were saying something to her. Um, yeah, just so just really encouraging her, you know, just to sort of throw in my yeah. voice there, just yeah. to acknowledge that I was yeah. there too, just like she did. Perhaps yeah. mine wasn't as bad as well, bad, yeah. whichever way it was bad. The, mm. the pressures I got was from my in-laws, but mm. then some of the things that the church itself did to me. But whatever, maybe, um, I just want to say thank you so much. You're just an encouragement. And um, yeah. just please, people, open your eyes because someone is a pastor. Mm. Does not Doesn't mean, mean that, that perfect you know, they are perfect. Does not mm. mean they are God. Mm. Please do your work well. Do your mm. work. Do your search. Do your investigation. Ask questions. And if in doubt, do not proceed with it. If mm. in doubt, if there's any form of doubt at all in your heart that I shouldn't be going into this relationship, just pull out or give yourself at least break until you get a confirmation that you know God is actually supporting you. Even if you go into it, God will still support you and bring you out safely, just like my sister. Please, yeah. marrying a pastor is not is not a gold medal. It's not an achievement. It's not a reward. Or it, not just marrying a pastor. Marrying anybody, it's not it's not a, it's not like a, you're winning a gold or anything. It's mm. about you finding someone that both of you can do life together. And if you and someone can do life together, you don't have to go into it. Yeah. God bless Thank you. you so much, Gigi. Yeah. I appreciate your contribution. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, speak to you soon. Thank bless you very you. much. Bye yeah. Bye, you. Love bye you. sweetie. Bye, bye, sis. Love you. Miss uh Ruth, your connection is not good, I'm afraid. Miss P, you came back. Uh, I wanted more people to come into the studio so they can talk to you. Uh, your connection is, is bad now, I'm afraid. Can you disconnect and come back again? Uh, both of you, both Miss P and Ruth, your connection is not very good. I mean, if there's something that I'm learning from here today is the fact that a lot of people, the amount of scrutiny, because somebody in the comment section was saying that, oh, seven months is not a long time to date. And I, I said, actually, seven months is a long time to date someone for marriage. But the main thing was that she said that they were not even together. It was like a long distance because... 
Oga Pastor was always traveling. He probably was doing that on purpose so that um, she she's not going to find out. Ruth, your connection is not very good, my sis. Can you disconnect and add yourself again? Your internet is not very, very good. So, uh, so it is, but dating is not, I mean, I wouldn't say that seven months is not a long time to, to get to know somebody, but when it's a long distance or you don't spend time together, uh, then how do you know that person? You don't actually know that person. So that's a problem. And I also find that a lot of people, would you, you were thrown out before, I'm going to add you now. The, the scrutiny that they would have, you know, uh, put on a, a man that is not a pastor, uh, because it's a title that everybody uses very freely. Now, you don't need to go and register somewhere to do it. Anybody can say they are a pastor. You just wake up tomorrow and you say you are a pastor. And a lot of things are hidden under that title. It's not to say that there are no good pastors out there, but this day and age, there's a lot of people that is hunger that drove them. They were not called. Some of them are juju pastors. Some of them are spiritually. So women, please be very, very careful about pastors who are asking you, for marriage be very careful uh some people are not as lucky as dr p like she rightly said uh she was quite lucky that god showed himself to her and she was able to escape and you know she has victory and testimony to share other people are not so lucky so beware i don't know why women are so attracted to people who claim to be pastors i don't see the attraction personally i don't even want to be in a relationship with somebody that claims to be a pastor. Why? But some women, they love it. You see women running after their pastor, pastor, pastor. When they show you who the pastor be, your eye go clear. Would you? You're welcome, my darling. Can you hear me? Unmute yourself, would you? Okay, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, thank you. Obodo Ibo TV, you're doing awesome. Thank uh, you. I share your story sometimes on my channel. Thank you so much for what you do. May God bless you. Amen. Dr. P, I appreciate you for coming. I appreciate you for sharing your story. And I appreciate every woman that have shared their stories on this platform. Because you know, we men, the way that society sees us, you're not supposed to talk. You're supposed to be quiet. But thank you for enlightening others thank you for sharing your story to liberate many just like obodoibo tv you were saying you don't know why people are attracted to the to the to pastors is because is the show now is because they have that aura it's because you know the other people when you come to church that's whatever who everybody sees most people don't even see jesus they see the pastor hmm. and another correction now one other thing that i want to say is this not every prophecy comes from God. Absolutely. And if you've heard uh, some stories of all these fake prophets, you know, that God is revealing now, how they're sharing, how they get their powers, you will know that even the devil prophesies. And I heard one of them, the false prophet story. He said that as they are talking to somebody, you know, they are hearing from whoever their God is, not God concerning that person's future you mm. see so even a devil can prophesy Absolutely. i normally tell people when you tell me you're a christian i'll say uh-huh i'm born again okay it's by their fruits uh -huh. no real born again will uh -huh. be doing what that man is doing uh -huh. so we have to uh -huh. open our eyes uh -huh. but we are all about the show we are all uh -huh. about the popularity we are all uh -huh. about that and it, 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 it hurts me that when you come to church, people are not seeking God. They are seeking the man, uh -huh. you see? So Dr. P, thank you so much. Please, God will use you. This is just the starting point. Amen. Many women will be liberated Amen. from your ministry. Amen. And I like what you said that when Jesus, you know, you, your encounter with Jesus, he, he was talking to you. Because think about it, on the last day, it is you that will stand and give account of, mm -hmm. you know, how your life has been, you know. Your husband will not be there with you. Your children will not be there with you. So that's why people, oh, I'm married, my husband is saying, do, 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 do. On the last day, it is you 
and you alone that will give mm -hmm. account. Yeah. So it's time for women to start opening eyes and know, okay, my, I respect my husband, I love my husband, but what is God asking you to do? Mm -hmm. Don't be so dependent because Jesus, although marriage, yeah, he ordained marriage, but know your calling. Mm -hmm. Know the real reason why you're on this earth and mm -hmm. pursue it. So we will not, I just, will just keep on praying because it's happening everywhere. It is happening mm -hmm. everywhere. You know, fake pastors, fake prophets everywhere. And people are falling to that. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the opportunity given to talk. I appreciate you, Bodo Yubo TV. Thank you. Thank you. Are you continue to bless you. Amen. Amen. As you continue to help women, as you continue to liberate, I'm crying because as you continue to liberate women, because sometimes mm. when I pray, it's like body of women will come to me. I'm like, you know, women crying. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, but women this are is going a platform quite a lot. where women mm. they're can going to be quite liberated. a lot. A lot God of people. God bless you. Yeah. God bless thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. P, for sharing. Thank you so much. Thank Ju. you so much, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye, sweetie. Thanks for, thanks for your words of encouragement. Really appreciate you, sis. Love you. God bless you. S, you are next. I am not staying too long, so if you want to say something, please jump on the comment section. The link is there. We're just going to do an hour and a half. So we have about 25 minutes to go. Some people usually wait. But if you've got something to say, I advise you to please just come to the comment section, click on the link, and join, because I've only got an hour and a half uh, tonight. Thank you very much. S, you are next. What do you have to say? Yes. Yes. Hi. Um, good evening, Sister, um, sister, sister B. What I wanted to say is that my my mom is a pastor, so my parents are pastors, and I yeah. can, I mean, I my mom didn't go through what um, Dr. P went through. But the thing mm -hmm. is that raising a church and starting a church in America is very hard. And a lot of times my mom was working as an, like an LPN. An LPN is like the one before the nurse. Like she's yeah. not an RN, but she's, mm -hmm. she was an LPN. So she was pretty much working and using mm -hmm. her salary to support the house and to pay the church rent because the mm -hmm. offering set is not enough. Every event, everything, she'll be the one to cook from home, take to church and everything. But the good thing is that she, she never let church members disrespect her because she was a stern, she was a stern woman. She was like a no nonsense. So, you know, mm -hmm. when you've seen her face, you will know her face is like your face. No offense. So her face is like <laughs> your face. You can't, you can't come for her. She will, she will come for you. Is it your face? Her face is like my face. No nonsense. <laughs> No, it's not an insult. If my mom died, I look like my mom in the mood job. Yeah, so then you see some people now. You know, before people come for you, they would have seen your face and look at you, but they would like, ah, this person, we can't really come for you. This person, beware. Don't go and try. If you try. Yeah, you know. So, probably when they go to the hotel, I'll just look at my mom. I'm just like, ah, does this woman rest? He's almost mm -hmm. 60 now, and of course the church is growing, but you know, this um, this one wants to do name a uh, church get together, church Thanksgiving, this, that, dad, ah, like he goes to and my my dad doesn't work. So he's like using an income because um they say, you know, I'm in America, you know, full-time pastor. This I, I don't know, that's story for another day. So she carries a lot of burden, the burden home, yeah. and, and the bills at home, and now that the church is growing, at least the church um titan offering is covering the church expenses but before the church gets to that stage you know how it is in this country churches don't grow fast it takes years and years and years but before the church got to this stage it was that it was have salary she was using to pay the lights the heat you know and the heat is expensive in the winter you know mm -hmm. the church rents the, the you know she she's going through sometimes i look at her like me my pastor like even mm -hmm. church said the church said i don't go to because i'm like this is just not normal. It's a lot of burden. So when I say pastor's wife, they go through a lot, not just spiritually, but financially mm. and physically. So every yeah. pastor's wife out there and Dr. P, I respect them because I know the journey. I am, I was in it before I pulled myself out. Like, no, I would mm. not be a part of this. So yeah. For me, I, I mean, say. yeah, thank you very much, S. And I, I'm, 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 I mean, no I feel like, Wow. I wish your mom well. That's all I can say. I just wish her well because it's not easy. It's I not wish easy. her well. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's not easy. Thank you. Thank I'm you, my good. love. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if I was, when I was, let me not say if, when I was single, if you come to me and say you are a pastor, 
Yes, I will make a good turn. You this so, and I'm not even talking about now. This church business was not even that bad back then. No, when me I was looking for, I was get I was ready to marry you when I was in my twenties. It wasn't that bad. Now eh, is a pandemic. Honestly, this church thing. I saw a video today, or no, not today. It was about two days ago. I saw a video of this woman that claims to be a pastor. <laughs> Africa, they do us. Honestly, they do them because me I no be African again. I remove myself. I'm British, so uh, they do them. <laughs> the woman I'm bringing Bobby come out. Say, my church members go they suck now holy water for inside church when people gather. Another one he hold they say that this one a Ghanaian pastor because they don't enter Ghana too. Don't they try like Nigerians now? You know, not say that they've copied nonsense. The the man say he hold whether na aku I be na gari. I don't know he hold with soup. The church member go walk go there, go cut the go cut the the yaku, and uh, go put them for soup put for their mouth. They go put hand together, they pray as if they collect with me the communion. I say, wait till be all this one now. Wait till be all this to be alone. What is all this? The Yubo self that brought the religion to all self. They know they do one like this. They use their own to do charity. They brought their own. We don't talk about I beg I don't fit. Now. I will just make you turn like this and turn around if you have told me, say, you'll be pa. Eh, pa, waiting. Waiting, pa. I'm not cut out to be a pastor's wife. I tell my husband all the time because he's, he's very, you know, spiritual. He likes doing church work. If not be me, I'm sure he would have started church by now. <laughs> I mean, they discourage him every minute. I say, me, you didn't tell me you are going to be a pastor when we got married. So now, I'm not, I cannot be a pastor's wife. Me, I know, I'm not meant to be a pastor's wife. Me, I like enjoyment. They go party, uh, come to church, they fast pray. Every day they do Holy Communion. I beg, I know fit. But some women like it. Okay, a lot of people are attracted to pastor. If you see them for church now, so, hey, pastor. Because they like the shoe show to stand for front, to wear big hat. They do mommy G up and down. That's not my life, I beg. Or oh, every man unto their keto. Come on, say, sisters, Jare. No could I come in because we get only like uh, Auntie 20 B. minutes. Hmm. Auntie B. Hmm, Happy, Sunday my darling. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday, my darlings. I see that you change your YouTube picture. I approve. It's very beautiful. Oh, thank you. You notice. You are very detailed young lady. The profile. You, are, you notice I have yes, changed and the red is one of my favorite colors. So I just changed out to that picture. Like, when I tell you say the picture fine, now I can't put them. In the yeah. fire. Good choice, mm -hmm. Auntie B. Thank fire. you. Regularly scheduled announcements. I be like pastor wife. You don't see the kind of clothes why they wear. Now, Papa, Mommy, do you wear this kind of clothes? If I wear this kind of clothes, they're not going to drive me for church. Auntie B, continue to discourage you. I'm going to discourage. No, I hear me. They will drive me for church, oh. And I also feel, sorry, my ladies. I go let you now talk just now. I also feel some lazy people, they use this thing as pastor cover. Thank you. Oh, you didn't rush the sense. Be, you didn't rush be, this is your wisdom. They didn't use a flog you for now. <laughs> Everybody, now you go the lazy. You know, see what the air stop just now saying, Papa, no, they walk. How you go there, America, you start church. The church is not going yet. You know, go walk. You let all your wife, they pay the bills. How the lazy that? that? Evil priests for this church, for this country, that they walk. That they walk. Yeah. All of them get jobs. Why African church? You just start one room church, you know, go walk. They disguise in the spirit. Spirit, what? Well, let me not see what I want to say. Ati B, please continue looking fabulous. Continue attending those parties. Please, parents. though. Ati yes, B, you're going to give us more. I'm not going to to wear that hat, oh. That big hat, so. You know, mm -hmm. I beg, I beg, I beg. I beg, I beg. The only hat I wear is beach hat. I beg. That hat. How does hat when they wear? Where they wear? I now they, you're not going to say they cover your glory. Oh, that the other Indian hats. I don't know. It's hats. not my. Mm, I never pray for it. I don't want it. Mm. Mm. You don't know why women they want to know them, Sabi. What did happen? People will never like this video. People like say, mm. you were we were over one thousand before. We now they fight our trouble. Mm. Now be the thing. So we <laughs> never like this video. You why never enjoy this story. You they hear this, they collect common sense. Mm. Is it fair? This is an act of wickedness. Small, yes. small droplet of wickedness. Please, we want to be aroused we, by the top. Please, top see as the as the, as the video as the like what they increase. You, you not like away you like mm. Give so give please, the algorithm something to work. Give with. a thumbs up to the Lord by clicking the like button. Mm. Thank you, thank so, you, my ladies. Mm. Mm. You know, people now. Eh, 
Anyway, if you cannot we just talk, we not, we talk, we talk, we talk, we talk, talk to you. I'm going to talk to Dr. P. She's mm. listening. So that we go quick end. Okay, mm. okay. Where you start? Mm. Make I start. You See, mm. start. in this life, mm, you have to, as a human being, boy or girl, male or female, man or woman, you have to identify your values. When you identify your values, and your values are physical, they are not tangible, but they are physical, nothing spiritual about it. Identify your values. Those are things that are tied to your core, which means that if it doesn't align, you are not going to compromise. When you identify your values, you know your purpose. When you see something or someone who doesn't align with that, it's very easy to mark them out of the list. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Now, Dr. P came here and she told her story and all that you know, and she's written book. And what I'm hearing from this woman is she's very intelligent. She's yeah. very brilliant. You know, she's very, very brilliant because, I mean, this is a computer scientist we're talking about here. I can't even imagine. And she also built a system. I think she said she built a system and then they kind of overtook it from like the yeah, church yeah. and all that. That's her skill. She went to school for that. She got scholarship. So she's a formidable force, mm -hmm. right? Now, in everything she was saying, I was trying to understand what's her value, you know? And the fact that this man was able to see that star in her and took advantage of that star. And, she and, and because she is the reason why the church grew. She was the reason why the church really grew. You get me? And he was taking advantage of her. He was sucking it gradually, mm -hmm. gradually. She was giving him permission at every stage. At every stage. Maybe unknowingly. Unknowingly, yeah. 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 And this is not to judge Dr. P. Mm -hmm. This is for women these who might science. be going through it. These are, the, mm -hmm. these are the red flags that we are seeing. And that's why I'm so thankful for her story and her eloquently telling it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you know that, for example, my value is I will not tolerate dishonesty. So when I meet somebody who is dishonest or he has given me reasons to question his behavior and I ask him, why are you behaving this way? For example, why would you, why would you go and have another woman instead of me and punish me in Nigeria after I've done all these sacrifices? And a guy will say, oh, well, you know, don't worry about it or whatever. Whoa. Then I look at my value and I say, ah, this doesn't align with Yoyo's value. I don't deserve I have it. to emotionally start checking out and mentally and physically start checking out of it. Because for every time you compromise on your value, you undermine your purpose. You reduce yourself. And you reduce your, your, yourself. I'm talking in general of every human being, right? Whatever has been given to you, you have to use it. Mm -hmm. People are out there to come and steal and destroy. Mm -hmm. That's common sense. People are out there to steal and destroy. And that's why you'll be hearing, that's why all the audacity the women had and the man's behavior and knowing the And even the co-pastors had, had to tell you to be forgiving. Yes. It, it, for those co-pastors to come and be telling you to be forgiving, it also means that those they have a very terrible value system. And you staying, if any, if any person who is currently staying in this type of situation, if, this, if Dr. P's story has not inspired you today, please, Try and rewatch it again so that it can inspire you. And you, you have to leave that environment because then you'll be contributing to that deceitful life, okay. lifestyle. Because when you leave and you start doing things that you're supposed to do, then you identify your tribe. And your tribe which means that the people that align with your purpose, that mm -hmm. align with your values, where you're supposed to be utilizing your gifts and your skills. And you have to be paid for it. Mm -hmm. You have to be paid. There's nothing spiritual. If it doesn't make any common sense, you know, because we're living in the physical, if it's not making sense, man, you know, forget about it. And anybody that's coming to do, there's difference. If somebody is telling that they are prophetic, mm -hmm. it's an act, A-R-O-T. It's an acting behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody can be charismatic, can be, be jingoism, talking up and down, you know, to entertain. Yeah, there are people that are prophetic. There are people that, that are gifted. In, yeah, people in that, that are gifted. You also see it in the character. Mm -hmm. they, it's it's just that, you know, everything, everything about Christianity has been so bastardized by Africans that it's so, it's so shameful what mm -hmm. Africans yes, have turned yes. Christianity into. Mm -hmm. Christianity right. has become a different thing in Africa. But mm -hmm. one of these Hey. But, but one of the simple it's even happening in the abroad, auntie, including mm -hmm. other races. Mm -hmm. Not the Africans, they do. No, 
no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, and in their character, it doesn't align with what they claim they call a gift. Mm -hmm. That's common sense. It's like, no, 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 no. This one is just being manipulated. This one is fake. Yeah. This one is fake. It's just being manipulated. Because they have that skill to make you to be doubting your own spiritual common sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all I have to say. When, we, when woman or a man, you identify all these things, please begin to exercise, you know, some common sense and be removing your yourself so that these people will not come and steal and destroy everything that you have been given mm -hmm. my own contribution is mm. saying mm. no you have to i'm coming three three basic points for me number one is the spiritual abuse which i identified there thankfully we spoke about it like a few weeks ago last week or uh, i think on our channel or so spiritual abuse and how you have to identify this thing like my sister has said if somebody's actions are different from the words that they are saying you should believe their actions it's better when you identify this small small droplets of abuse in the beginning and check out than for you to remain because the more you remain the more you are easily manipulated the more you are brainwashed and all of that stuff number mm. two is for the unpaid work of women in the household now this is for obviously the topic of this about a ex an ex-pastor's wife dr p right you realize that this woman was doing every single thing Hard within working. her power this woman built a church Literally, look at it from a business angle that yes. has different branches. If if now aggregate bread, where you start from, Kishin, mm -hmm. he opened different branches Batches. for Japan, America. Uh -uh. Come get three different televisions. This is and a she woman was never recognized. that was, and she was never recognized, she was and she was never financially blessed for the hard work that she put in years of sweat into this. Uh -uh. So, if you be a woman, you get gifts. You get gifts for these words. You are like Miss P, Mrs. P, Doctor P. You get gifts for this world. Don't undermine your gifts. Mm -hmm. And do not let your gift Never be under somebody shadow. else's shadow. shadow. Never. Never allow that. Because in doing that, many people are going to benefit from the gifts that you have today. Like mm -hmm. Dr. P, don't they use the gifts now? See how many people, both women and men, I'm not limiting this to only women. Women and men will go benefit from his story and from his gift when they use today. Number three, women... That are probably all uh, spiritually, over you know, you're inclined, over spiritually and inclined. Remember to have common sense in all the things that you're doing. Mm. Look at the signs, the red flags are there. Mm. It's mm. my not, you, you know, there's, there's something called the honeymoon stage, the, you know, this infatuation. Thing, infatuation stage and whatever. Look at the signs. Marriage, when you they enter, you know, see they talk and say, it's supposed to be with this person that you are going to spend the rest of your life with. Do you want to spend your rest, the rest of your life in headache? You are worth more than that. Then if you don't say, God, they call you. Mm. Or your man, say, God, they call him. Mm. Beware of which of the God that is calling him. Mm. And the, the God you is yourself, him. no say, you can also be called. Mm. So if you get mind, say, you know, say, God, they call you. And you be woman. Why not open your own ministry? Exactly. You don't have to be under mm -hmm. a man's shadow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because we're married now, you have to build together as a pastor well, and a pastor's wife. Well, that she is, said, she said she was, was actually really really inclined before. And that was part of the thing mm. that attracted him. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. The man said marry her because uh, she was <laughs> praying for him. For praying for her other thing. Mm -hmm. What yeah, a good see, reason see, to see, marry somebody. Yes, see her, see her, Dr. P. Open, because that woman, as she opened that church, as she opened it, she has to open it. Even when she come out of the church, for bagam. She's a pillar. God. The church so, for whatever, if anything you are doing, whether you got to do with church emotions, or yeah. family business, maybe saying that your husband idea, they sign that contract. So you can be spiritual, but also look at the physical because you are living in a physical world too. Yeah, yeah. sign your yeah. contract, yeah. ensure yeah. that you're she wasn't paid. paid. That part of it, no, yes. that's not okay. acceptable. Many she should have mm. remuneration is very, very important. You gotta get your if, you have, yes. if you don't have access to the company's finances and no, there is really. money coming in, it's oh a business. God. Your yeah, name has yeah. to be on every document. If not, not do the work. Not do one. Mm. Not if not, if thank God is in the UK now. Nah, nah, if not nah, Nigeria, if for can come out, uh, go if start going. Go. Like he, 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 Miss uh, uh, Dr. P is still Dr. in the P. house. If I yes, drive yes. out of the house. Exactly. The bills went down and they pay for you can ask spiritual. No, 
hey. have a physical bill. You have I to wonder. collect your own cuts. And if they're not great, you don't do not do the work. And that person they will go do it. True. Not, another person and they did not call, they did not call. If, if they say, Oh, if you said if you say hey, now nah, you never call, call not be me. Not be me. Make a mm, yes from us. Absolutely. Thank hey, you, my ladies. Like this, mm. like button. Let's wait this like yeah. this. Too. Your head, do your head. <laughs> <laughs> it is well with them. They go watch before they dislike. Now they know. Mm, <laughs> consign their pa- you know, consign them and their papa. Thank you, my Thank ladies. You so much. We have Appreciate a you guys. Day. All right. Thank you. Bye, have everybody. Good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Absolutely. You are so absolutely correct. There was somebody that was here just now. The internet just flagged you off quickly. If you are still there, quickly join in. My link is in the comment section. We are ending now. Literally got less than 10 minutes to go. Uh, yeah. Miss Dr. P. Yeah. <laughs> You're here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We've talked uh, quite a bit about, you know, working as a pastor's wife. And you said that you are very, very experienced in, you know, handling... Or talking, what would you say to finally? Let me ask you this question because I want to close. What would you say to because I know there's a pastor's wife now who is going to watch, who is watching now, or who will watch later that is going through a narcissist abusive relationship? What would you say to her? Yeah, what, what I'll say is that don't keep quiet. That's number one. You have to speak out, you have to let your uh, relations know, uh, or people who respect whom um, you respect. Let them know. And then secondly, the person has to go through counseling because you have to deal with the root of the problem. But in paraventure, they refuse to go for counseling. Then you need to sort yourself. You need time apart to really pray and seek the face to go, whether you can continue in that relationship or not. Because abuse, uh, uh, narcissistic people, to be honest with you, they are very proud. They hardly change but sometimes you have to take that bold step because just like a sister said, you're going to stand before God alone. You are not going with your marriage certificate. God will require um, what you've done with your life. You're not going to say, oh, my husband stopped me or my husband was a narcissist. That's why I, I could not. Your mental health is very important because the Bible says, guide your life diligently. There mm. comes the issues of life. And mm. we've read in the book of Second Timothy, Three here, he says, if they don't want to say cut off from them, you mm-hmm. have to take a very hard decision because this journey is is you alone. It's not with nobody, and your mental health is important. It is not what you sign up for when you are getting married. So it's like a contract that has been broken. You have what to. If, what about when they keep the church members keep telling the person that it's been that the woman in this case that is the one that is suffering at home that God hates divorce. Yeah, God hates divorce, but oh, there's also a scripture, uh, I think the book of Proverbs, that said that God hates the, 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 the violent person. You see, God hates divorce, but God does not also like somebody who is violent. So if you're, if it's very clear here in the book of 2 Timothy 3, it says have nothing to do with such person. We have to use wisdom here. If a narcissist actually, look at it, look at their character. It's not, it's, on, it's an unbeliever left to me. And the Bible says if the unbelieving person departs, you have no um, anything to hold you. So, and by their fruits, you shall know them. So when you talk about he hates divorce, the, the person is, is, is behaving like an unbeliever. So even the Bible says when you can't feed your family, you're worse than an infidel. Not to talk of a narcissist. God hates hates violence, and so you should. You cannot stay in a violent relationship. It's not going to work. It's not thank glorifying to God. Thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for being here tonight. We are going to bring the show to a close now, and uh, yeah, I hope uh, this will bless someone. Thank you, Doctor P. And uh, may God bless you. Thanks for sharing with us. And yeah, we'll definitely have another conversation again about what it means to be a woman, which is linked to identity again. Uh, And then we look forward to having you on that show. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, have a good evening. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. Thank you. Yeah. So, my people of God, mm, thank you very much for being here tonight. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, I have somebody who uh, I, at a point I have to give up because you have you can't help somebody who doesn't want to help themselves. Uh, this lady uh, who is married to a pastor in the U.S., a Nigerian pastor, and uh, she doesn't have documents. 
And the man keeps telling her that they are going to deport her. They will take her children. So she's afraid to leave. She's there. I try to support her outside the show. Try to talk to her. There's nothing I've done, done but she's not willing. Uh, so at a point, I had to let go because it was a lot of my energy that was going into that and she was not willing. So hopefully, she'll learn one or two things from tonight. Please, if you meet anybody that claims to have a ministry or they are called, they have a calling, ask them who called them, who? Hmm? Who called them? Is it God that called them? Is it a Jegebre that called them? Or in Jemanke? Who called them? Is it Baba Onik Bejo in Isaleko that called them? Then you need to find out. Pray. And of course, we talked about dating, getting to know each other. If you're dating somebody long distance, you never get to know them. That is just, you are taking chances. Because you never know. It's only when you now get to see them on a daily basis because they dated seven months. But they never got to know each other because Oga Pastor was traveling quite a lot. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, the important thing, whether they are pastors or no pastors, all those titles means nothing. Okay? He's a man first. So, don't be bamboozled by somebody saying, ah, 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 you know, I'm the general overseer. I'm the I'm the set man. I am the this. I am the that. All those lowly hero pastors that keep claiming all those big, big titles to bamboozle you women that will be falling all over them. Like I said, I don't understand the attraction, why women are so attracted to men of God or pastors who, or people claim to be pastors. A lot of them are fake. We see them all the time. They are exposed every day. They are channels who are dedicated <laughs> to exposing them. So, yeah, uh, be very, very careful, ladies. I encourage you to be careful. And, of course, the book by our sister, Dr. P, who is a woman. I've shared the link. Uh, let me share the link once more before we get out of this chat and i want to thank all of you for being here tonight thank you i hope you've learned one or two things unpaid work in the diaspora is a no 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 if you do any work including housework uh being a full-time mom eh this is how you both do it if you're a full-time mom i've just shared the link to the book uh if you're a full-time mom then Whatever the other partner is bringing in belongs to both of you. It belongs to the whole family. That is how you both do it. When you are in Rome, you behave like a Roman because you are at home taking care of children. You are taking care of this, taking care of that. So you are actually working. I say it all the time on this platform that being a full-time housewife and mom is one of the, is like the work that, no me, I don't even want to do it. I prefer to go and work because it's easier to work than to be a full-time mom and housewife i don't want to do it it's work it's real work and it's hard work so make sure you get paid don't sit down and be thinking his money is our money especially when you are not having access to that money make sure you have your own money okay and if you can't have your money because you are doing working for the ministry or working for the family then you should have some allowance you should be paid or you should have access to the money that is coming in very, very important because when you are gas, they will leave you with nothing. Mm -hmm. This Mongo Park, don't go marry another one now. Within how many years, that one self don't scatter. You see? And the worst thing is that people like that will never see anything wrong in their behavior. It's always the other person. He will marry, like, you know, the, the, uh, uh, Dr. P said in his family, a history of, you know, marrying and remarrying, marrying and remarrying, and they never see anything wrong in it. May God deliver us and never ever allow us to come. Uh, we are friends, our siblings, and anything that we, anyone that we know come across people like that. So thank you very much for being here tonight. I appreciate you all. Please give this video a thumbs up. I hope you've learned one or two things. Thank you, Dr. P, for coming. You are very, very eloquent. I see uh, teaching in your future. You, you remind me of a lecturer. I see uh, teaching in your future. You already said you got a job in a college. I don't know if that's teaching, but... I think you are very, very strong in being aura and just narrating and talking, talking, talking. You have a very big strength then, and you're obviously a very intelligent woman. PhD. Wow. Super impressed. Well done. Congratulations to you once more. So, guys, we're going to draw the curtains here tonight. Thank you very much for watching. We're back on Tuesday. All right? We're going to come back on Tuesday, and we are going to talk about something else. Please give this video a thumbs up as you are leaving. Thank you very much for being here tonight. I love and appreciate you. And I'll see you in my next one. Have a good week ahead. God bless you. Bye, guys.